Hence, pick up a little. <laughs> okay, good. Um, so I'll be talking about quantum pseudo randomness in um, algorithmica and its implications um, to cryptography and complexity. So this is um, most of the talk is going to be drain work with William Kreshmer, Mark Singha, and Avishay Tao. Okay, so um, I want to start the talk um, by reminding ourselves uh, the, the theme of the workshop as we are uh, coming to its end. So the theme is called Minimal Complexity Assumption for Cryptography. And what, uh, what is the thing that we are trying to investigate? I think the question is, um, what is the minimal complexity assumption for cryptography? Um, as I have gathered so far from all the other talks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, um, but for this talk, I want to take a step back. Why do we even need complexity assumptions for cryptography? Um, okay, um, but to answer this question, I have to make it more concrete. Um, so here's one way to make this question concrete. Why do we need complexity assumption for some useful cryptographic task X under a realistic model until 1989? Okay, so what do I mean by useful cryptography task X? It means like things that people use in practice. So like encryption, signatures, um, authentication, um, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and now that I have added all of these quantifiers, I can tell you the answer. The answer is that if I want uh, such an X against polynomially bounded adversaries, then you will need one-way functions. Um, and once you have one-way functions, then uh, you separate MP from P. And that's a barrier. Um, it's wor that's worth a million dollars. So you probably can't just prove that they exist without winning a million dollars. But um, you might also have noticed something very subtle about uh, my question, which is this year, 1989. <laughs> so why, what happens uh, uh, in 1989? Well, there's this paper by Bennett and uh, Brassard they show that, um, okay, so the title is The Dawn of a New Era for Quantum Cryptography. Uh, basically, they started to uh, experiment with what is um, probably famously known as quantum key distribution. And they started doing experiments showing that you can actually do uh, information theoretically secure key distribution um, in the real world, not just, um, not just uh, on paper. And obviously, this year is not during the real world or just the Well, is classical crypto secure in the real world? I think it is. <laughs> well, this is why, why is the experiment? Uh, well, obviously, we all agree that the theory is well founded. Why is the experiment? Uh, why does this validate anything? Right? Because there's no nobody. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 So the point is that, um, going back to last slide, I'm talking about a realistic model until 1989, and the point of this slide is that maybe we should try consider QKD as also just as realistic as the classical model, um, and obviously like. It has been like 30 plus years in 1989. And like everyone ha can do QKD these days, right? You can find it in an average physics lab, QKD. Uh, China doing QKD in the space. You can even buy a QKD, commercial QKD um, from this website. Uh, it's same or not affiliated or tested, just on it um, on the web. Okay. So let's go back to this question, but instead ask what happens today in the year 2023? So after 1989, why do we still need computation, uh, complexity assumption for doing these useful cryptographic tasks? Um, as we already seen, QKD uh, or key distribution, uh, which uh, what is what QKD is supposed to be doing, uh, actually do not need any complexity assumption. Um, um, unfortunately, uh, after the discovery of QKD, um, quantum information um, theorists have been looking at this problem and they realized 
Well, actually, uh, most of the interesting cryptographic tasks are still unachievable if you want information theoretic security. Um, this includes commitment, OT, VC, encryption, authentication, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it appears that unfortunately, QKD is actually the exception, not the norm. Um, all the other tasks still seem to require computationally bounded adversary. You cannot get them from information theoretic security. Okay, but uh, let's go back to the question, which is, do we still need complexity assumptions? Um, it's actually not clear. Um, in fact, we can make the question a bit weaker. Uh, for these cryptographic tasks, or for which of these cryptographic tasks do we still need, say, for example, P not equal MP? Okay. Um, well, unfortunately, I don't know the answer. Um, but in this talk, I'll give you some um, uh, progress in answering this question. And the way we give some progress to this question is via oracle separations. Okay, um, so for those of you that are not very familiar, um, formally oracle separation tells you is that uh, you will be able to rule out a wide range of proof techniques called relativizing proof techniques. So if you want to prove that uh, cryptography the existence of uh, these cryptographic tasks implies P not equal to MP. If you have an oracle separation, then it says that these kinds of proof techniques um, cannot be used to, it's not sufficient to prove in this uh, statement. Yes. Was there a very good reason why like these two complexity classes still instead of like, I don't know, PQP versus Q of A or something else? Um, because this is the question that is worth a million dollars. <laughs> but it's not obvious that this is like for honest like a uh, quantum crypto like p uh, uh, okay so the, the high level oh, good so the are, more high we level are in a, we are in an institute that is funded by more than one million dollars <laughs> <laughs> okay. for one million dollars and you can uh, some, <laughs> some, some, some the 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 is worth is worth more than that. okay sorry i take it back at least a million dollars <laughs> um, but the, the, the thing is, um, um, I want to reduce it to some known barrier. MP not equal to MP is uh, arguably one of the biggest barriers in computational complexity. Obviously, there are different other barriers, like weaker barrier, like P versus P space. Um, but uh, this is uh, like a starting point. Since classical cryptography does it, you can do classical constructions and the current sure i'll talk about it right? yeah i'll talk about it but yeah. you know if p equals to mp i can kill all the classical cryptography so at least we should start by investigating this question instead of going to even weaker assumptions constructions. why it's fair to compare the p to p i didn't say it's fair but um, <laughs> this is a this is a good starting point you can obviously you want to like roll out more but this is at least a starting point <laughs> actually post quantum life is unfair quantum life may be better <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, so what is the oracle separation that we prove? Um, so the informal version is that uh, we show that it is possible to construct an oracle world where uh, P equals to MP, so we live in uh, algorithmica uh, in, in Pagliazzo's five world, but still computationally secure quantum cryptography is possible. Uh, what does this include? Uh, specifically, we'll be constructing a form of quantum pseudo randomness that um, might have already appeared in pre previous talks. And as previous talks have shown, once you have uh, that, then you can get um, what is known as EFI and uh, its friends. So commitment OT, blah, 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 even black, undec undecodable black holes. Um, okay, so uh, before I tell you the formal theorem statement, let me first tell you what is the, the quantum pseudo randomness that I'll be considering for this talk. Yeah, so uh, again, it's pseudo-random states, or PRS for sure, introduced by the work of Ji, Liu, and Song in 2018. Um, and the specific, specific variant that I will be considering for this talk is uh, from the work of Morimei and Yamakawa. Um, so the uh, definition is that you have an efficient quantum algorithm G 
Uh, so we, we say it is an, a single copy secure and qubit to the random state generator or PIS generator if the following two condition hold. First, uh, it satisfies efficient generation. So you give it a lambda bit input C, um, just like a PRG, I give you a short C, and then you run in polynomial time. And in the end, you output some pure state of n qubits. And I want it to be pure, just like classically, I want the PRG to be deterministic. Um, and pseudo-randomness uh, or a single copy pseudo-randomness says that uh, if I just sample a random pseudo-random state for a random key, then uh, if I just give one copy of this state to an efficient adversary A, it should not be able to tell the difference between this state and just uh, a uniform random bit string or maximum mixed state for quantum information theorists. Okay, and here, just like classical PRG, um, I require that um, I require that like the, the length of the output has to be longer than the length of the input. And this guarantees that this construction will be non-trivial or like it actually does imply EFI because this gives you the statistical fairness just like how you might imagine the classical reduction goes. Okay, any question about this definition? Um, yeah, so you can also consider the many copy secure variant where the adversary can get any number of copies of this state and, uh, uh, and the statistical distribution that you are ask uh, to mimic is the n copies of or t copies of some hard random states. But for this talk, we will be mostly focused on single copy secure where uh, we are just trying to mimic random bit strings. <laughs> okay, so after seeing this definition, you might have a very natural question, which is that um, how is it possible to actually have a separation? Um, um, so for example, you can say, um, can't I have uh, maybe a QMA adversary for breaking pseudo random states? Um, so how, how does this adversary work? Um, the advers uh, so it's a QMA, so there's a Merlin and an Arthur. Uh, Merlin will just send Arthur that uh, what is the seed that was used to generate uh, uh, this pseudo random state. So I said Merlin sends K, and then Arthur just can just check that the input state that um, he got was uh, the the correct pseudo random state uh, with C K. Right. Um, unfortunately, there is an issue, which is that this is actually not exactly the syntax of QMA even because. Uh, here, Arthur has as input a quantum state, and um, you cannot just ask a, a QMA oracle to decide uh, some something for you if uh, you, the, the question you are asking them is not encoded in a classical bit string. Um, and in fact, uh, this is somewhat inherent as uh, as we'll show we'll show uh, in the oracle separations. Okay, so uh, let me go back to what we've shown in this work uh, more formally. Um, so first of all, just to recall, um, in the black box setting, so you, using only relativizing proof techniques, we can show that if you have post quantum one-way function, then you can construct even many copies secure to the random state. And once you have those, uh, you can have EFI and lots of other stuff. And all of these are only proven uh, so they are oracle friendly or only using a relativizing proof techniques. And uh, what we show formally is that um, there is a classical oracle um, relative to which um, single copy secure pseudo random states exist. Uh, but on the other hand, P equals MP, and in fact, uh, P equals PH, where PH is just uh, the point, uh, the closure of MP. Um, uh, and let me also mention that uh, in the prior work by Kreshmer, uh, there is a, a complementary theorem uh, that is shown, uh, which says that there is a quantum oracle relative to which, uh, uh, so what, what they get is slightly stronger, so they get many copies secure to the random states. Uh, and on the other hand, um, BQP equals QMA. Okay, um, so let me just, uh, uh, maybe quickly justify why we have to like spend this effort to prove a different theorem when we already have K21. 
So why 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 isn't K twenty one already conclusive enough? Um, uh, there are a few reasons. The few uh, the first reason is that uh, the the separation of K twenty one is a little bit cheating. Um, because uh, if you want to separate um, one-way functions from quantum cryptography, then if you, and if you are using a quantum oracle, then it's kind of maybe obvious that um, one-way functions still do not exist because you have a quantum oracle. And if you are a classical computer, you can actually never make use of this quantum oracle. So, um, so of course there is a quantum advantage just because quantum algorithm can query this oracle, whereas the classical algorithm cannot. Um, and uh, OK, so that's a little bit intuitive reason. But formally, um, the reason there is another reason, which is that if you only have a quantum oracle separation, uh, it is actually weaker than a classical oracle separation. In particular, uh, quantum oracle separations only rule out quantumly relativizing proof techniques. And that is like a strictly smaller set of general relativizing proof techniques. Uh, and Aronson uh, in this work has shown that there is a counterexample. So there is some quantum oracle separation that fails uh, for any classical oracle separation <laughs> or relative to any classical oracle. OK, um, the third reason is that uh, the K21 separation actually does not have a uh, uh, much implication to how to instantiate quantum cryptography in the real world. And the reason is that uh, the way that K21 constructs PRS is just by taking a hard random oracle, which is kind of similar to uh, a random oracle, but uh, for hard random unitaries. And uh, the reason why this is problematic is because unlike random oracle, which we can uh, somewhat know how to heuristically instantiate we have literally very little idea how to heuristically instantiate the hard random oracle. In fact, even constructing the pseudo random unitary is open, whereas constructing pseudo random function we've known for many years. Um, okay, finally, uh, it's a small point, but still worth pointing out. We get uh, P equals MP in this separation, whereas the, uh, the other theorem gets BQP equals QMA. And technically, P equals MP is called algorithmica, and BQP equals QMA is not called anything. <laughs> and, uh, and there are also oracle separations between each of them. So they are technically incomparable. Is it for constructing the spherical one-one describe that probably fails, or it's just that there is no logical analysis? Something just mixes the Good, I'll talk about it in the next slide. Um, so let me also talk about some cryptography candidates without only functions. So actually, this is not a, a complete new research directions. Uh, people have thought about uh, what, what quantum cryptography can you do without relying on one-way functions, although none of those have uh, any oracle separations, um, at least prior to our work. So this goes back to as early as the work by Kawachi et al. in 2005. Um, where they uh, consider some uh, assumption about some quantum state distinguishability problem for a specific family of permutation states. And uh, they show that on the one hand, it is implied by harness of graph automorphism. On the other hand, they use it to construct quantum PKE. Uh, but it is unclear whether this is actually weaker than one way functions. And there are also uh, a few works Okay, maybe two words that constructed uh, EFI commitments from complexity separations. So the work that we just heard about uh, can give you EFI from uh, like the worst case assumption that BQP is not equal to QCZK. And the prior, uh, there is a prior work by uh, these people where they show that uh, if you have a complexity separation of QMA and QIP, which equals P space, then uh, you can also get commitments. Although the catch here is that these commitments are uh, aux has auxiliary input or sometimes even worse, quantum auxiliary input, meaning that all the parties that participate in the protocol needs to first come up with some inefficient advice. And once you have that advice, then it's secure. Um, there are also some folklore construction, like the one that Ron talked about, uh, like in the quantum supremacy literature, people 
uh, have this hypothesis that maybe random quantum circuits can generate pseudo randomness, maybe some form of pseudo random states. And uh, in a different context, uh, Boolean Fafari, uh, Fafferman Vazirani uh, conjecture that maybe if you just reverse engineer the dynamics of wormholes, maybe that gives you a way to come up with quantum pseudo random states. Um, uh, but with that said, uh, just to compare, uh, in our work, we have the first uh, construction that is non-trivial of pseudorandom state or even any quantum cryptography, and we have a separation of it from only functions. Okay, um, so without further ado, I will now start ta to talk about uh, how to construct it. So the starting point of our construction is the binary phase pseudorandom state construction. So how does it work? So again, you are given some input CK of lambda bit, bit string, just like a PRG. Um, and I'm going to consider some, a, a family of Boolean functions, FK, um, that maps n bit to one bit. And so the construction is as follows. Um, I start by initializing n qubits in zero. Uh, I apply Hadamard on all of them, and then I get n qubits in plus. Or if you look at it in the computational basis, it's a uniform superposition over all the computational basis states or all the base strings. Um, and then what I'm going to do is uh, what's called a phase oracle uh, for F, F of k. And what this does is that it's going to apply in superposition. So for each computational basis state, uh, it is going to apply space minus one if F sub k of x is one. Otherwise, it just applies space plus one. So in the end, you get this uniform superposition with plus minus one phases, depending on what the Boolean function is. So that's the construction. In the end, you output this state, which is an n qubit state. Okay, so this construction is actually proposed back in the very first work that proposed to the random states, but they didn't prove it secure. Uh, it was only proven in the subsequent work by Brekersky and Shmuley. Uh, they proved that this is secure if you instantiate F sub case using random oracles. And uh, as a corollary, if you replace these random oracles with pseudo random functions, it is still computationally secure. Um, so one naive idea to try to uh, construct pseudo random state for P equals MP is that maybe this is still secure for some F sub K, even if P equals MP. Um, unfortunately, actually in this work by Kreschner, it has already been shown that if, P equals MP, then we can in fact break all binary phase PRS uh, for any efficient uh, F sub K. So this goes back to the, the question uh, earlier that um, it is actually not clear. Like P equals MP is actually uh, ve a very real, P versus MP is a very robust question, right? Um, you can, if they, if they are equal, then you are not, you are not only rolling out all classical crypto, you're also breaking binary phase PRS. So indeed it is not, it is not trivial. Like something can be broken. Um, so our work show that there, it is possible to construct something that does not rely on the harness of MP. On the last bullet, is that for multi-copy? Uh, good, yes. So it is only for multi-copy. Um, but we suspect our construction is also multi-copy secure. It's just that we couldn't prove it. Um, I'll talk about it later. Um, right, uh, I guess it's not clear how to break it with only one copy. So, so this doesn't rule out other possible construction PRS, just to this. Uh, exactly, that's, that's what we are doing. Um, so we are going to use some other construction. Okay. And this is, uh, so we gave this construction a name, it's called T4 relation state. So how does it work? Uh, you again, uh, okay, so first of all, instead of one function, you are going to take T Boolean function. All of them are uh, mapping n bits to one bit. And you're again, start with uh, O0 state, and then you apply Hadamard and then face Oracle on F1. But what you do next is just to uh, replace it, uh, redo it a bunch of times, because clearly this is something great to do. So you do it again, Hadamard, uh, face Oracle for F2, so on and so forth, you do this T times, uh, but each time using a different, uh, possibly different Boolean function. 
I mean, what's a quantum Boolean function? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't define a quantum Boolean function. Okay. Um, yeah, so you can see that how this is like a generalization of binary phase states, right? Because if I just set t equals one and set f1 to be like just the same construction before, uh, like take a random oracle h, f1 is just h of k, some input, then this is essentially recovers the binary phase state that we had from the last slide. So uh, well, uh, by restating the binary phase PR as security proof, we have that one for relation state uh, with F sub one um, uh, instantiation like this is a pseudo random state, multi-copy secure pseudo random state against BQP. Um, and then if you do it multiple times, and by the way, this is called uh, the Hadamard phase cocktail construction because <laughs> you are doing like basically interleaving this uh, operation. And this, this cute name was proposed by Scott Aronson. Um, okay, so what happens if you do it twice for two functions? And this, uh, what we formally prove in the paper is that if you instantiate F1 and F2 with random Oracle, so F1 is H of K1 input and F2 is HK2 of input, then, uh, what we show is that uh, this is remain single copy secure even for BQP with a pH oracle adversary. So this is an adversary that can query any pH questions about this random oracle. So certainly in this world, um, P equals pH and still such a construction remains single copy secure. Yes. Let's do some defense of this P. Uh, so here we are considering a specific, specific instantiation object. of using random oracles. Okay. Not arbitrary. No, not arbitrary. Obviously. Like for example, if F is just zero, then, no zero, then uh, you yeah. get back zero, right? Yeah, and uh, just to uh, uh, just to confirm, like this K is what is the secret in this construction. Yes. I think that the deformulation was conjectured in JLS already, right? To be a PRS. Uh, is your conjecture, like what you were saying earlier, is like the, the two formulation thing? Uh, the JLS conjecture says that the one formulation state uh, is PRS. Uh, you also had a construction of PRU. I think you also yeah, mentioned it. It is, okay. it is similar to the PRU construction that they proposed. Thank you. They also don't consider giving you a powerful oracle, though. They just think they're just saying it's a secure for you. Yeah, they only care about BQP, whereas we are looking at BQP with a pH oracle. Okay, um, so we only proved that this is single copy secure, but as I said, um, it's actually only a technical issue that we don't know how to extend it to multi copy secure. And plausibly, our construction is actually multi copy secure. We just don't know how to prove it. Uh, for some technical issues. Um, but nevertheless, um, we gave a conjecture about T4 relation, which is something that I will tell you about in the next slide. Um, so under that conjecture, we show that um, T4 relation state with uh, basically the same construction, but uh, have much more Boolean functions is in fact, multi copy secure PRS against BQP, even with the pH Oracle. Okay, so, uh, with errors, we can query the pH oracle in superposition, right? Yes. Um, they can query any pH question about the random oracle in superposition. Right. Well, you, you, last two balls are saying that this, you conjecture both two correlation and t correlation are secure against the pH, but you have like a more robust conjecture. Is that right? Yeah, you can think of the t correlation. Um, Okay, so certainly like that conjecture that we put in the paper is actually probably not true for two correlation. But nevertheless, I think there, uh, I have a separate conjecture well, saying that even without changing the construction at all, this should be secure. I think, but you have like a, a more plausible looking conjecture. Like well, I don't know which one is more plausible. But definitely T is like more secure in some sense, right? Yeah. You can hope that the more you do, the more secure you'll be. But they have a minimal conjecture of the maximum. Right? <laughs> okay. um, yeah, so let me move on to correlation problem. So what is this correlation? So this is a problem introduced by Scott Aronson um, that, uh, so the, the original motivation is to come up with 
some uh, query uh, problem that is trivially easy for quantum, but very hard for P or even MP. So the, 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 pro, uh, the problem is following. I gave you an n bit Boolean function in F and G, and I want you to distinguish whether these are sampled in the first way or the second way. So the first way is that F is correlated with G, which means that if you take the Fourier transform of F under Boolean, uh, uh, Boolean field, um, that this function is going to be correlated with G. And the second case is just that they are uniformly random. So with high probability, they are not correlated. And indeed, in the original paper, we know that this problem is uh, very easy for BQP. Um, um, but on the other hand, in the breakthrough result by Raza and Tell, it is shown that this problem is indeed uh, hard on average against uh, pH query algorithms. Um, and in the prior work by Aronson, Ingram, and Kreshmer, uh, it is shown uh, that a variant of this problem called OR composed with correlation is in actually hard on average against BQP with a pH oracle. And uh, this is, will be our starting point of our, uh, of our security proof because they morally get the same uh, class of algorithm that we want. And in, in fact, like this problem is also very related to uh, our construction. Um, so the main idea of the security proof is that we are going to reduce such a problem to a new uh, harness property of some Boolean function that we call harness of shifted correlation. Um, so what is this harness property? It says that if I give you a, uh, a function H, so let's say you have the code to big H, and I am going to like, it's kind of similar to the security game of PRF. So think of big H is the overall PRF, and H is uh, something uh, that you have query access to in the PRF security game. So we say big H is hard to find shifted correlation if I give the adversary quantum query access to little h and your, the adversary's job is just to decide how this little h is sampled from one of the two cases. <clears throat> the first case is that there exists some, uh, uh, some key K such that um, the Boolean function H of K zero and bit input is correlated with uh, this, this, this Boolean function. So H of K one input X or little H. So that's the first case. So, okay. So to spell it out more explicitly, it says that if I take Fourier transform of H of K zero X over X, this function is going to be correlated with um, H of K one X, uh, X or H of X. Uh, like average over X. Okay, and the second case is again, H is just a random function. So with high probability, there is no such K that they are correlated. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, so the, <clears throat> the, the idea of our security proof is that uh, we should, what we show is the following. So first of all, uh, we can see that uh, we can show hardness of shifted correlation actually implies single copy security of two correlation state. Um, um, so because I, I, I don't have much time, I, uh, if you're interested, you can take a look at the paper. Um, and on the other hand, we prove that if you instantiate H with a random oracle, then this, uh, the random oracle indeed satisfy this BQP to the pH hardness by uh, doing a reduction to uh, the BQP to pH average case hardness of or of correlation. Um, so one technicality here is that when we do the reduction in the end, we end up with some discretely defined correlation distribution. And we have to basically uh, reprove that this is still remains BQP to pH hard um, for this new distribution. But nevertheless, we did it, but this could be something of independent interest. Okay, um, so that's, uh, about all I uh, will say about um, uh, the construction, and now I'll move on to implications. Uh, let's, yes. Where is this like a OR come from? Yeah. Oh, you can think of OR. The OR part is basically the, the key. So the OR part here, we also have an OR predicate here, like we're saying exists K. So that's uh, morally how OR comes in. 
Okay, so let me quickly move on to the implications. So on a high level, what we have shown is that uh, there is uh, some harness property for a classical hash function called harness of shifted correlation that's interesting because it satisfies uh, the following uh, desired property. First of all, such a harness property for hash function is useful for construct quantum cryptography. Um, second, uh, this harness property seems plausible because we show that it's actually true for a random function. And finally, we show that such a, uh, this property is, appears to be weaker than P not equal to MP or even P not equal to PH, at least in the black box setting. Um, and uh, you can say that um, uh, similar to what the other talks have done, if you heuristically instantiate uh, this construction with a heurist, uh, cryptographic hash, like SHA-3, then it is plausibly secure, even if P equals PH. Okay, so, uh, so here's, um, if you are lost, um, now is a good time to wake up and tune in because uh, here comes the takeaway slides for the cryptographers. Um, so as you can see, um, uh, I have in Pagliazzo's five worlds beautifully <coughs> illustrated here. Um, so the takeaway is that our work um, has came along um, and we did a final snap um, and the five worlds are saying, um, we don't feel so good um, and they disintegrate out of existence. Okay, so, okay, what does, what does they actually mean? So going back to the question I asked from the very beginning, does cryptography need complexity assumptions? Um, our oracle separation says that for these uh, uh, practically relevant cryptographic tasks, they at least appear to be actually independent of Impagliato's five worlds. Um, so plausibly, plausibly not, but you can naturally the next step is to ask what about other complexity assumptions? Are there any other barriers? Um, so there are something that, that is known. Let me quickly summarize them. Uh, in the work of K21, Krashmer 21, uh, the, he showed that uh, if you have many copy secure PRS, you can separate BQP from PP or post uh, BQP, which is still complain, containing P space. So you separate P from P space. So it's still some uh, surprise. And in an upcoming work, uh, we use an observation uh, of a uh, result by Mecker and Yuan, uh, which show that if you have uh, any computationally or even quantumly falsifiable assumption, uh, meaning that there are some security game that, that is information theoretically broken, but uh, computationally secure, then you can um, separate a unitary version of P from a unitary version of P space, which I will not define. Uh, but then again, this is not actually a, a barrier because for all we know, we can just prove that these two classes are unequal. Um, all right, uh, and it will not like cause uh, P, the decision of P, uh, separate decision of P from P space. So uh, a few open questions. Uh, if we only have single copy secure PRS, can we still separate uh, the decision of P from decision of P space? Uh, I think, or, or like even weaker things, uh, does EFI imply separation of P from P space? Um, and finally, uh, the, the big question, uh, asked very, at the very beginning. Can we just prove that quantum cryptography exists without assumptions, period? Or can we identify what are the other barriers uh, that prevent them from existing? Okay, um, before I conclude the cryptographic implications, um, since this is a workshop about, about assumptions um, following Wednesday's panel, um, I would like to make a meta comment about assumptions. So here we have the cryptographer workshops. Um, and here we have the speaker on the left uh, speaking at the Simon podium. Uh, and uh, she's saying, let's summon a demon, excuse me. I mean, new cryptographic assumption. And the, uh, the audience is like, OMG, this is gonna be so fun. <laughs> okay, uh, so what's the punchline? Here's what's happening at Crypt Analyst Workshop. Uh, all caps, who keeps summoning? Um, 
<laughs> At least that's how I imagine it goes. <laughs> um, okay, so what kind of assumption am I going to unleash upon this world today? Um, okay, so uh, for now, let us hear a word from my sponsor, Ron Kennedy. <laughs> okay, so Ron Kennedy is asking this question, uh, which asks you to give a simple candidate instantiation of our two four relation state because he hates SHA-3 uh, without using one-way functions. And what is the reward? Uh, it depends on how interesting it is. That's what he said. Okay. So if you're interested, get in touch with Ron. Okay. So, so my question is that I've been bugging for a while. So the complete function, which is the end of it. There's no way Why run the work? But, you know, there's, you know, the, you know we are assuming that P is equal to a D, and that would be working. So, some Boolean function. <laughs> okay, so there's that. Um, now, let me move on to complexity in the remaining five minutes. Um, so, here's a perhaps surprising fact to you um, there are actually natural computational tasks with quantum inputs and or outputs that are actually not captured by our current complexity theory. Um, one example, as, uh, as I've been talking about for the uh, past half an hour, is breaking quantum cryptography. But there are also other natural non-cryptographic tasks. One example is uh, if you want to do a quantum experiment, maybe you can do it faster if you can just do it on a quantum computer. And there are also other things that quantum uh, computer scientists have been studying um, that just, just uh, they have implicitly been considering the computational complexity of these tasks, but they are never put into a, a language like the language of complexity theory that we have today. So this includes like things like ground state preparation, tomography, quantum error correction, <laughs> and uh, like the talk this morning, decoding black hole radiation. So. Uh, and if you look back at our separation, maybe, uh, maybe this motivates that maybe we should study the complexity for quantum tasks or even meta complexity for quantum tasks. Um, as like our separation is also saying that you cannot just reduce these problems to studying the comp computational complexity of solving classical or decisional problems. Whereas classically, like if P equals MP, then you get FP equals FMP and so on. Um, okay, so since I mentioned meta complexity, let me mention one relevant work about meta complexity. So again, in the Kreshmer's prior work, uh, he he had this observation that if you have many copy secure pseudo random states, then this actually implies that MCSP for quantum states is hard, just like how classical PRG implies classical MCSP is hard. And if you look at the oracle separation, then it says that the MCSP for quantum state could be hard, even if BQP equals QMA. So maybe we should study uh, the complexity of uh, quantum MCSP using a quantum lens. Uh, I mean, even quantum more than BQP versus QMA. Okay, but the punchline is that we uh, need a framework to talk about the computational complexity of doing these computational tasks. Okay. Um, so, uh, so here's a quote by uh, Lance Fortnow, uh that he said, uh, just published on his blog last month. Um, so I don't have much time left, so you can read it if you want. But the punchline is that, uh, first of all, complexity uh, has uh, modeled the infancy of quantum computation, cryptography, randomized parallel computation. But now there's something that our complexity theory does not uh, capture. So maybe it's time to rethink the models. Okay, uh, let me conclude by mentioning some cool works about quantum complexity. So obviously I think they started with the uh, Aronson's uh, phenomenal lecture notes in Barbados about quant uh, the complexity of quantum state transformation and unitary uh, quantum state and transformations. Uh, and then in the past few years, there are a few works like this work by Irani et al. that studies quantum search to decision reductions. Uh, this work that uh, I, uh, appeared briefly before about quantum algorithmic measurements, which is about uh, accelerating quantum experiments with quantum computers. 
Uh, and there are also uh, this recent work that proved the quantum state version of QIP equals P space. And hopefully th there will be many more uh, exciting works that are coming soon about quantum complexity and quantum meta complexity. Okay, that's all, thanks. Questions before our next virtual speaker sets up. Yeah. So this is more of a general knowledge question, but uh, what do you think of like quantum learning tasks? Do they have a place in your head in this? The hardness. Which hardness? Sorry. Yes. Learning quantum circuits. I mean, it, uh, it, it is a very interesting um, computational task, but I'm not sure how it fits into it. I think it should, like we should be able to study. Any more questions? Yeah, there's a question about the quantum state versus the quantum state. Yeah. Uh, 